Hi everybody, I'm Jim Halloran as part of Community Arts in Arlington for Arlington County's Parks and Recreation. Today I'm going to take you through a paint demonstration and it's a common question I'm often asked is how do you take something from a photograph and put it here on canvas. So I'm going to take you through step by step um, along the way just to see what we can do here today. Um, what I'm going to do to start is just go over some of my basic materials. So I'm using acrylic paint today, which some of you may um, have at home. Uh, it's not the most fancy acrylic paint, so most acrylic paints will work for this uh, type of project here. Um, but the way I instruct, you can also apply it for, for oil paints too, if that's what you're using at home. What's nice about acrylic paint um, is it's water soluble, meaning that I'm just going to be able to clean my brushes with water. Um, and it's also non-toxic, so it's great for, for a room like this. Uh, and we're actually in a beautiful space here with, with great lighting too. So um, I'm gonna be using just an array of paintbrushes here. So let me just pull them up really quick. Uh, and you can see these are just basic bristle brushes and they're all different sizes. So that's kind of the basic idea here is that I kind of have out everything I need so that I don't have to get up out of my seat. Nothing kind of deters an art um, experience more than having to stop and try to look for some supplies. So I tried to get just an array of brushes here from big, which really isn't that big for a canvas this size, it's kind of perfect, to something a little smaller here too. And then I'm gonna show you here, this is a fan brush, uh, which is kind of a magic brush, and you'll see what, what that means in a little bit. So array of brushes here. Then I'll be using just a pencil. Um, I'm gonna do some basic lines in the beginning, but you're gonna see I'm just using very few lines. I'm gonna try to get you guys painting as soon as possible, but it is good just to have something to make a mark here on the canvas. Um, and then I went ahead and I put all of my paints out um, on my palette, which you'll see is just a piece of foil. Um, what's nice about that is I can just toss it when I'm done. Um, they do make uh, nicer palettes than this, but this kind of works for me. The only thing you have to watch for is if uh, you're outside or if the air conditioning's on, it can sometimes flip over. So I'm kind of weighing it down here too. And you can see I put out a lot of colors. That's probably more colors than I'll need. But like I said, when you're painting, the best thing to do is have everything out in front of you because if it's not out in front of you, you probably won't use it. So my feeling is like, let's have some fun and make some accidents. Uh, and really, if I don't have out those colors, I'll never use them. So that's part of the idea. Paper towel too for, for cleaning brushes. Um, as I go with the water here, like I said. Okay, so I said we're gonna get painting really quickly. So you're gonna see here, I'm gonna do just a very few kind of lines with my pencil so that we can get painting. A lot of times I get this question a lot. How do I take something as complicated as life from a photograph here uh, and how do I make that into a painting? So that's kind of like not a simple answer, right? It's not a one-two answer. Um, two steps, right? It takes a little bit more, but I'm gonna help break it down, right? So I'm trying to take something complicated like real life and put it to here so that you can turn it into paint. Uh, so I kind of broke it down into a couple simple steps in the beginning, uh, and then the rest is really just pushing the paint around till we get something we like, which hopefully you'll get. So to start, I'm gonna show you this line here. You can see there's a very clear line here. We have uh, sky above, and water below. They call that the horizon line. So anytime you have a line where the sky meets the earth, that's called the horizon line. And that's usually your starting point. All you have to do is draw one line and believe it or not, you'll have a landscape. So I could see my horizon line here. If this is the center of the iPad, right? It's slightly below that. Do I have to put it exactly there? Well, it's yours. You get to decide. I could put the horizon line up top and really focus in on the reflection here or I could put it down below and really maybe improvise a little bit with the sky. It's really up to you. Um, there's no wrong way to do it. And remember, uh, as an artist, you're like the director, right? So you get to decide uh, just where that line goes because this is your painting. You're taking a photograph, which is its own work of art, and turning it into a painting, which is something totally different. So just remember, that's a jumping off point. It's nothing exact. So um, I do like it kind of below, and I did set up the photograph here um, so that it's a little bit below center. Um, so I'm going to kind of follow that too. I'm using pencil here. Some students use paint, some students use charcoal. Um, pencil works fine. The problem with pencil is it's not easily um, able to be erased um, on canvas. Um, so if you're, you're unsure, you could do even a lighter line. So I'm going kind of dark here for the camera. But believe it or not here, guys, I have a landscape. If I were to fill this in with color down here with some blues and some trees here, 
and some greens, I would have a, a painting. I could almost start painting now, but um, I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail um, just so that we have some areas to fill in. So uh, what's next? You could see here, trees, right? The closer I get, if I get really up close, I can start counting leaves. That's where we want to avoid. You're trying to take something complicated and put it here. So I want big picture stuff, right? Big picture stuff is like where the sky meets the earth and then also here, where the tops of those trees are. So I'm not drawing individual trees. Everyone wants to do the detail first, right? Um, that's how we know a lot of times um, that we're just beginning because we focus in on the details and we miss the big picture. It's actually hard to see the big picture before the details, but I'm just reminding you guys here, find that line here, right? Okay, do you notice I didn't measure, um, I didn't um, focus too much on like kind of even where things are, right? I just want you to know you can be flexible. It doesn't have to be exact. Now, if it being exact is important to me because this is like my grandfather's farm and I know that oak tree so well, I could be exact, but right now, not so important. So I just drew a line in here and look at how loose that is. I'm gonna be able to fill that in with paint and it's gonna to start to look like trees pretty soon. Now, I have a reflective line here too. Do you see that? Trees being reflected in the water. Let me measure here a little bit. This is actually a little bit more important. Do you see that? It's about the same size, right? That's how reflections work. Reflections are about the same size. So look at that. I'm not looking for uh, precision. You know, this is not an architectural drawing that's going to be um, the foundation of a house, let's say. It's a painting, right? So I'm not so interested in perfection, right? But I'm try trying to get you in the ballpark here. That's what we're going for. And you know, and if it's a little bit off, hey, go to the National Gallery of Art and measure reflections and tell me if they're a little off and I bet you they are. Look at that, if I fill that in, um, that's almost the, the the main areas of this painting, right? And I broke it down into horizon line, trees on the horizon line, reflection, and then the water and the sky will kind of take care of itself. So that's almost all I need for drawing. Now there's all these little things in here. Uh, there's like a dock, right, and a little house. Uh, maybe later, I would not dare draw those in now because it's much harder to paint around a little detail with acrylic than it is to like slap that on top. Watercolor, different story, but in this case, I could just kind of ignore that. Um, I'm realizing I didn't talk about my canvas, so I'm gonna talk about that. You're probably maybe from the start being like, well, that's a pink canvas. They don't come that way. You're right, they don't. Uh, how did I get to this point? Well, it's much nicer to paint on top of a color than it is like an ugly white canvas because if you put paint on white and if you don't cover it all the way, you see white coming through, just using the paper towel as example. If I see color coming through, it's actually a lot more pleasing to the eye. And notice here, what colors do we have? Yes, greens, right? It's, this is a painting about greens, if I, if I could sum it up. So the opposite of green is like a red. So if we have light greens and we have pink, they're contrasting colors and they're gonna look wonderful together. I'm gonna let some of that pink show through and the colors will kind of buzz against each other, right? It will be a green on top of a red and contrasting colors, uh, something actually happens, right? that's kind of a little uh, color theory. When you have two contrasting colors, it will really pop out. So that's why I use the pink. And I also read about the pink because one of my favorite artists, uh, Whistler, uh, you can see his collection of works at the Freer Gallery. You'll notice he has this kind of gray pink underneath. And for those who like to be technical, I'll show you here the three colors I used. I just used acrylic underneath. So I used mostly this red, a little bit of white, and then a very, very, very little touch of that blue to cool it down a little bit. That makes it kind of a cooler pink instead of like a hot pink, if you think about pinks in terms of warm and cool. All right, so now it's time to actually paint. I need to look here to kind of see where I need to start. So you can see I drew that horizon line first, drew the trees on top, reflection underneath. Now, it would be silly to do the reflection before I do the actual objects that are being reflected. And that's really what this painting is about, right? I said it's a painting about greens, but also these nice trees here. So I'm gonna start here um, and kind of explore colors along the way. You can see here there's lots and lots of different types of green. So if I make up a bunch of different greens, um, 
Here, that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly one specific green. And I like to say with color, there's more than one road to the right color. Um, in terms of value, what's light and what's dark, that might be a different story. We might all agree on like maybe what the darkest part, right, the shadows are of those trees. But in terms of color, I think that's a little bit more um, subjective. So I'm going to go with the biggest brush I have because remember, I'm going from something uh, big to something detailed, right? Think big picture first. So I'm going to just try to kind of put just some blocks of color in, kind of mass in what they say, uh, colors um, to get maybe the right color greens and shapes of those trees. So notice here, I actually don't have any greens out. Uh, and you could maybe say, well, that's a little silly, Jim, because you said this is a painting uh, about green, but you don't have any greens out. Um, I have, look, one, two blues and one, two, three different yellows, right? All those different blue and yellow combinations are going to get you some fantastic greens. Um, as a backup, I do have some greens here um, if, you, if you need some greens uh, out of the tube. But my teachers always said, you know, never just use a, a color straight out of the tube. It's always good to mix them up. And you can notice here these are very mixed up greens. So I'm going to use this ultramarine blue here just to put some down on the palette. And I have a little bit of water. So a touch of water kind of loosens up the paint. I used to mix in more mediums with my paint, but as I paint with acrylic, the, the more acrylic you have, the purer the paint, I find the easier it is. And here's my classic kind of yellow. That's my cadmium yellow. It's actually cadmium yellow medium for those keeping track at home. And that gives you your basic kind of green color. So let's try, let's put some down. Hey, look at that. What are you noticing? Yeah, me too. You're noticing that pink underneath, but that's okay, right? That's going to kind of influence the colors in the beginning, but painting is all about layers, especially with acrylic and oil. So if it's a little bit um, transparent or translucent where you're seeing colors underneath, don't worry because it's just about getting some layers down. Now, one way to remedy that too is to use more paint. The more paint you use, the less you're going to see underneath. But I'm just trying to fill in um, some of this space here. And I notice this is just a darker tree, so that's why I started there. If I want to go even darker, I can add some burnt umber. If you're not familiar with paint colors, they all have kind of ridiculous names that have a long history in art history, um, and those names stuck. So part of learning about color is learning those tricky color names. Okay, and if the paint feels sticky or tacky, I tend to add a little bit of water to loosen it up, especially early on, right? This is just kind of massing it in. Notice I'm just trying to get some uh, darks down first and some greens, right? I'm trying to go for shadow areas first. And what color is it? Well, it's green, so I'm just going for dark green. And I could look, well, where are the other shadow areas here? And just kind of fill it in. Remember, this is probably one layer out of uh, two or three at least. Sometimes you get lucky, you can put down one layer and that's enough. But usually you put something down and it's, it's okay. It's kind of right, maybe kind of wrong. And you take it from there. If you don't put something down though, that's the worst thing for an artist, right? Paralysis, so you don't know where to paint. You don't know what to do next, you know? And that's why in the beginning, it's nice having teachers to, to show you kind of maybe step-by-step where to go, but I would say just keep painting, keep pushing through. That's my, my great advice for you beginner painters out there. Just push through, keep painting. Because if you put something wrong down, at least you know it's wrong, right? You may not know how to fix it, but it's a starting point. You know, just keep pushing through. All right, notice what I'm doing here. I'm just getting in down some of these dark greens. I might be able to darken them up later. Even here, if I use some ultramarine blue and burn umber, you get almost a black color, but it's richer than black. It's not, um, it's not flat. It's deep and rich like a real shadow is. Okay, filling that in here. You know, it's kind of fun. When I get quiet, that means 
I'm kind of in a zone here, right? Every artist gets into the zone where you stop thinking and you just start painting. That's where we all want to be. Okay. And notice my brush strokes, right? Very loose, not counting any leaves here. I'm actually going to try mixing in a lighter yellow too. See what we get. Because it's getting a little bit lighter. I think I have a nice dark down. Hey, check that out. And I can overlap the colors. Right? Let's fill this in here. And look at the pink is showing through. It's, it's way better than white. Trust me on that. I started col coloring my canvases uh, a couple of years ago before I, I started painting. And I haven't, haven't looked back. Okay, notice here I'm going lighter green. Why? Well, that tree is much lighter. Remember, we're going to be doing layers. So there's nothing I really have to commit to right now in the beginning. If I make a mistake, it's okay. And you will make mistakes. I've learned with demonstrations. When I first painted my first uh, demonstration, I was holding my breath because I'm like, wow, I, I really messed this thing up, right? in front of a live audience, there's no turning back. And I just wanted to crawl under a table, but I pushed through and by the end, I got something that I enjoyed. And that's kind of the process. You know, sometimes you don't love a painting till the very end. So I like to talk a lot about those things instead of have perfection right up front. And you might be thinking, well, that looks pretty good to me, but believe me, we all see our, our mistakes in the beginning, but the trick is not to dwell, dwell on them. Okay, so notice I have it, I have it blocked in. It's, it's kind of nice, right? But this is just one layer. I'm still seeing some pink kind of showing through, but I like the shape, right? I can make some decisions now about the shape. Do I like that shape? Uh, and I have some nice values down too, right? Some darks um, and lights and the greens, greens are okay, but I'm gonna build on that green. Honestly, if I wanted to, I'm just going to mix some white in with my yellow here because I'm noticing the, the paints kind of are sinking into that canvas. But check this out. You know, I want to be careful not to work too hard on the trees before I do everything else, but sometimes the colors change as they dry, right? And I went a little too dark. So I'm just lightening it up a little bit. Look what white does. White's a very opaque color. Yellow is a very transparent color. So think about that. If you have a color that isn't kind of laying down the way you want it to, it's too transparent. You can go a little thicker with the paint and also add a touch of white. And look at that the color just kind of jumps out. Remember I said it's all about layers. Uh, all of a sudden this color is making all the colors around it look a little bit better. And I'm not using so much water, right? I'm going a little thicker. I used water in the beginning to kind of loosen the paint up just to get things covered. And now I'm like able to go on top and layer it a little bit. You know, and the paint underneath is, is pretty dry, dry enough, but if it's still wet, sometimes you can end up pulling paint off. Um, and if that's the case, take a break, paint some other area. All right, now I'm doing exactly what I said I didn't want to do. I'm working on these trees a little too much. So I'm going to take a step back because um, I'm going to go back to those and maybe get in some of the reflection while I know what kind of colors I have right here. So reflections, right? This is complicated. That's kind of hard to understand what's going on there. Um, we know that it's a reflection of these trees here, but maybe think of one or two things how they're different, right? That's important. Because if it looks exactly the same, it will look less like a reflection and more kind of like a mirror, right? But a reflection is more of a phenomenon than a physical thing, right? Reflection is just like how a light, how light reflects an object on maybe in this case, a body of water, but this is all water. So we have to make it look like water, right? Um, because no one's going to see this when you're done. Everyone's going to look at this. So how do I make this look like water? Well, here's my, kind of a uh, one-two punch on how to do that. Um, number one is notice that it's more blurry, right? 
it looks a little bit more faded out. And that's really important. A reflection should never be more kind of defined than the actual object. Um, it shouldn't be exactly the same. It needs to be a little bit different. So look at how kind of fuzzy it is, right? And I'll show you how to do that. Remember I mentioned that magic brush. I'm going to use that a little bit, that fan brush. Um, another thing is the color. Um, photographs can be um, notoriously misleading. A lot of times color it just gets captured in a way to make everything really intense, right? And kind of like beyond lifelike, right? Um, but we want to make something look lifelike. So the color here, look at how intense that yellow is. Here, pretty intense, but not as intense. So that's something important. So less defined, less intense in terms of color. And you can see here, when you really look, there's kind of the sheen here of this kind of like reflected glow on top. I'm going to be working that in too, and maybe a couple little waves. So again, that one, two is less defined, less intense. So how do we make something less intense? Well, you can make something grayer. Um, so how do I make something grayer? Well, adding a touch of white will make something a little grayer. So when I mix up that green, check that out. That's green with white mixed in. It's a little bit kind of bluer or grayer and not as intense and not as dark as the original. So again, I'm kind of mirroring my process of what I did up top. I'm trying to get in the darks first and then work up to lights. And I'm using a different color, right? It's more blue. And I have some of that pink showing through, which, which I actually kind of like. You know, the pink might show through this entire painting here, and that's okay with me. Much better than using white. Okay, now remember, there's no, um, there's no like committing right to something in the beginning if you don't want to. So I kind of know that if I make a mistake now, which naturally there are a few, um, it's okay. I'm going to be able to change it, right? It's all about layers. Painting is all about layers. I actually find acrylic painting and oil painting a little more forgiving than watercolor, especially if you're beginning um, as a student. And notice I'm not, I'm not using as much paint too. All right, now let me mix in some of that yellow and I'm gonna mix in some of that yellow and white with that original color here that I used for the shadow. I've been called a, a stingy painter, meaning I don't use a lot of paint, but I think that the trick is I don't use a lot of paint in the beginning. Uh, I kind of tread lightly because especially oil and acrylic paint, you can go uh, too thick too soon and um, it's kind of hard to recover, right, when you get too much paint on the canvas. Sometimes you just have to let it dry. And I wish I was that patient, but I like to work um, a little fast and to get everything covered. I don't like to let things dry. So I use less paint in the beginning, and that, that tends to work for me. So what I'm doing in those lines, wow, those lines really helped me in the beginning, right, getting those down. Um, Right now, honestly, this painting, kind of a lot of just blobs at this point. But believe me, this is all going to lead to some of those kind of magic brush strokes at the end. I'm gonna use a little bit of this yellow ochre. It's kind of an earthier yellow, right? Instead of that bright yellow, I'm using a little yellow ochre here. Okay, maybe I need a little bit of brown here too this kind of orangey tree. Okay, painting the iPad, but that's okay. Right, even that can be fixed later. All right. All right, so let's see. Um, I can kind of make an assessment. One thing I didn't say is sometimes you need to step back too from your canvas because we're working in like this small of a space, right? You can spend, uh, you know, hours working in like four by four inches, right? And you're just kind of, you're lost inside of something. So take a step back. You know, if you need to get up, take a break, get some water. Um, that's a good time, kind of time to come back and see what it looks like from a little bit further away. Because if you're too close to something, you may not see the big picture. So after you step back and you take a good look, you know, I can see how the shapes look. Is the reflection kind of matching up with what I'm actually painting? 
And do the colors and the values look right? And the values, remember, are how light or dark something is. Um, I can kind of make some assessments. Remember, it's all about layers. So this is just like one of maybe two or three layers. I can always go back to it, but it's just a good spot here to kind of just match things up. Because the worst thing is have something really nicely painted or nicely rendered, but the drawing is maybe a little bit off, remember? Because the reflection should be straight up and down. It should match up kind of exact, straight up and down. Um, so kind of looks okay to me. I might go back and you could see the paint here dried a little bit lighter. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Remember, you don't have to commit to anything. If you don't like an area of the painting, that's your brain kind of telling you to maybe go back and give it another look. You are your best judge. So if your instincts tell you something's not finished, you know, whether your teacher tells you to stop or not, go back and fix it to your liking. Because at the end of the day, you're the one living with this thing, right? And we've all had paintings that we've uh, flipped the other way against the wall because they just didn't look right, right? You have nothing to lose by trying to make this thing a little bit better. All right, see what I'm doing? I'm just bringing those darks back. Sometimes you get it right on the first shot, but oftentimes uh, the rest of us don't. And for us perfectionists, right, it's, it's part of your nature to go back and kind of tinker and adjust. But look at bringing those darks out, wow. And overall, they're lighter, right? They're lighter than what's being reflected and a little bit bluer. All right, I think I'm going now into the sky and the water. Remember, I'm gonna be able to go back and make adjustments later, but I like to kind of paint the whole picture first to get kind of the big ideas down. So I got the trees, the reflection, water, sky. So let's go in that direction. I haven't really cleaned the brush so much, so I'm gonna to go to that now. And it just cleans up very nicely with water. If you're using oil, right, this would be like your, your turpenoid or turpentine or whatever you use to clean brushes, but acrylic cleans up very nicely with water because I'm gonna to shift to a different color, right? This really kind of nice, cool blue. So I'm gonna use a different blue for the water. I think that will be a nice change and it will make my painting a little bit more dynamic. So I'm using a touch of ultramarine blue and this is cerulean blue. And remember a little bit of white kind of tones down that color here a little bit. And you know what? I, I'm matching up the color here with what I see here, and I see it's a little different. I almost see, almost see a little bit of purple. So let me put in a little bit of red. How did I know that? Well, I've been painting a long time, and I know that red will make it a little bit more of a purplish kind of grayish color. And hey, that's pretty close, right? That's a good way of matching things up. Okay, so watch this. Look at that rich color. Wow, that blue against the pink of the canvas, that really, really pops. Just kind of scrubbing that on, right? Look at that pink coming through. The pink is actually kind of nice. Remember I said the, the blue felt a little purple to me? Well, the purple is kind of being naturally made too because I have a blue on top of pink. And the less blue I put, the more kind of pink shows through. So here's that magic brush, here's that fan brush, right? I'm gonna try to soften the spot where the blue meets the green. Now the fan brush only works if paint is wet, right? And we all know that acrylic dries pretty quickly. But it does work, right, if one of those colors is wet. So check that out. I have all these kind of like areas where the paint kind of didn't cover the pink completely. But hey, that looks pretty good. And remember, it's all layers, so I'm gonna be able to go over things again if I don't quite like them. So right now, maybe I'll notice here, it's a little bit lighter up here. So I'm gonna add more white. Now waves tend to go left to right, so notice my brush strokes change too. Up here, brush stroke is kind of scrubbing kind of everywhere, just the way leaves are, right? Leaves grow in all different directions. Water tends to flow left to right. And how do I know that? Well, the waves, that I see, there are these little waves here. The waves are going left to right. And I'm gonna scrub the paint right on top of the green. And honestly, what if I went over everything just like this, right on top? Not bad, not bad at all. 
right? Usually it is bad when you start, right? And the more you paint, the more you add, you move in the right direction and then you get something you like. And this is a nice spot to be in because I'm just adding more paint. And I'm adding more white too, I'm brightening it up. I tend to maybe underdo it in the beginning because I know I'm gonna be able to layer more on top. The worst thing would be to just do a big glop of white paint too soon. But check that out, check out that, that white paint. And the closer I get to the horizon line, the lighter the color is, the lighter the blue is. And painting, right, is, is an illusion. There isn't a reflection, right? There isn't a tree. There isn't a landscape, it's just paint. So I'm trying to kind of trick all the people looking at this thing into thinking that this is a, a landscape. And again, I'm very dry brushing. This is called a dry brush, not wet, right on top. Kind of cool. I'm getting a little halo here around uh, the trees. And I think it's because um, there's a layer underneath, right? <laughs> So I'm gonna go a little thicker here to kind of get rid of that halo. And look at, I'm even showing some brush strokes. This happens sometimes with uh, acrylic right here. You get a spot where maybe there was a little bit of water and the paint doesn't wanna lay down and you just seem to be taking paint off. So what I'm doing is just going a little bit gentler with the brush, not pushing so hard and a little bit more paint. Hey, look at that. I think that looks pretty good. Now, I don't have anything up top. So now I need to make my sky, right? Kind of match up with my, my um, reflection, right? I kind of worked in reverse. Um, so again, I'm gonna make the top Right, a little bit darker, a little bit cooler, meaning a little bit more bluer. And as I get closer to the trees, I'm gonna make it a little bit more warm. And you actually see some kind of green, some of the landscape shining through. It looks like a foggy day. So I might wanna show some of that stuff too. But I love the cerulean blue with, it's called primary red here. It's kind of a purplish color. Now, if you had a bigger brush for this step, by all means, you could use it. Sometimes I use small brushes because you get a little bit more control. But as you get more comfortable, feel free to use big, big brushes. But hey, this is the biggest brush I brought, so I'll use it. And notice too, I'm going left to right. I'm trying to make it dynamic. So the trees are kind of going in all the different directions and the sky is just kind of soft and subtle all kind of like feeling like it's one thing. Trees are many things, right? Trees are a bunch of leaves together. So it makes sense that the brush is going, kind of going in all, all which ways. So even if I kind of scrub it in here, I can smooth it out. And then again, magic brush, I kind of go up and down. Look at that. Remember things have to be wet for the fan brush to work. But look at that, that looks great. Right? I'm not really worrying about all that detail in that background. I might not even add it. I had a teacher tell me, if you can hear your paintbrush, you're not using enough paint. So I can always hear my paintbrush. So. <laughs> I know that that's not true for me. <laughs> but you may use more paint, that's okay. All right, so this is a big step in a painting, right? We got rid of all the pink, right? We filled it all in. That's, that's a challenge in itself. It takes time just to cover the whole thing. And this isn't even a very big canvas, right? This is a smaller canvas. So uh, congratulate yourself if you get the whole thing covered with paint. Um, that's usually your first step. And now from here, I can kind of do some assessing. I could say, well, does something need to be lighter? Does it need to be darker? Maybe both. Do I need to add more details? So that's kind of where I'm at now. This is a big step, right? And you could even finish here. I could say, hey, I'm done. This was good enough. It's a basic kind of 
demonstration of a reflection, right? But I think there's a little bit more to be done, and I don't think I have that much more to do um, to kind of fix things here. So one thing I notice is sky here is a little bit lighter. Remember I said the reflection shouldn't be more intense than um, the actual uh, thing that's being reflected. So the sky here, I think I need to make a little bit brighter, right? Maybe a little bit warmer. So I'm adding a little bit of the primary red, which is basically like your cadmium red. If you have that color, that works. And white. And look at what I'm doing. I'm layering it on top. Now I have a very kind of scritchy, scratchy technique here that I said was great for the trees, but not for the sky, but it's okay because I'm gonna use that fan brush and kind of smooth it out a little bit. See what that does? It knocks down my brush strokes. Kind of go up and down, left to right. It kind of smooths things out a little bit. And I could add a little bit more water here. All right, this is always a challenge when you have uh, wet paint on top of dry paint. But the trick is to try to get the two kind of integrated. So that's your challenge with acrylic, guys. If if um, if you like to mix a lot as you go, oil's probably your 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 medium to use because acrylic gets a little tricky because it just dries so fast. But my feeling is like I keep working till it looks good, keep adding layers. See what I'm doing? I'm gently going over everything. And then I kind of connected, right? Something light down here with something a little darker on top. That looks pretty good. Now that I have this color here mixed up, I'm gonna add a little bit of it down here. Right, remember I was complaining a little bit earlier. I said I could kind of see through my brush strokes right to the canvas underneath. I wasn't getting the opacity I wanted. So remember it's all layers. You can fix as you go and that's much softer. So with the brush, I'm gonna go left to right, right on top of that reflection. Remember I said it should be blurrier, right? The reflection can be a little blurry and soft and less vibrant. Well, there we go. Right? Now it looks like an optical effect. It's very blurry down here. Um, very sharp up here. Now notice here, there's a little bit of a reflected kind of light on top, kind of like a streak. So this is challenging. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of water with the blue I'm using. So that the water will make it a little more uh, transparent. And I'm just gonna brush it gently across here. Right? I'm not doing one straight brush stroke. I'm doing many little brush strokes, right? Hardly no pressure. Meaning I'm not pushing so hard with the brush. Hey, that looks pretty good. Okay, you could overdo it and then you end up with nothing, right? So the trick is to know when to stop. Notice on this side here, um, you really don't see the streak so much. So again, magic brush, fan brush here. I'm gonna kind of pull off some of that paint. Just kind of scrubbing on top of it. Whoop. So it's a little bit more intense on this side. Okay, where to now? Well. I, I think this is doing a really good job for me and I really like the streak here, but I'm gonna return now to my colors here and really bring out some details, right? Remember you're working from uh, uh, the very kind of big ideas, the big shapes to the small details. So finally, finally, I'm gonna go to a smaller brush. So you can see these are very, very small and they're perfect for detail work. So I have kind of the basic ideas down, but I can go back and I can make things darker and then I can go back and make things lighter. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of both. One thing I don't have out is black paint. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black because I don't know if I was getting dark enough with my blue and brown mix. So I'm gonna do blue and brown mix with black. Black alone tends to really flatten things out. Remember I said that if you mix up a dark with color, it's gonna be richer and deeper. Maybe I'll add even a little bit of crimson. But black with color is wonderful. 
So here, I'm going in for the shadow here. making things darker, right? I'm really kind of trying to pull, pull out some of the shadows, right? With a smaller brush stroke. And it's a very rich kind of color. And it's good, I, I'm kind of starting again, but now looking at detail instead of big picture, and I'm working from dark to light. Not using a lot of water here. Right, because the water will make that dark a little like transparent, which I don't want. I want it to be opaque. When you add water, it tends to make it thin the paint, but it also you lose opacity, meaning it makes things more transparent. So look at that. It's starting to define the shapes a little bit more. Now I could have done this early on, but my fear was that I get too obsessed with detail too early. It's good to get the big picture down first. Okay, so I'm gonna work up. I have that dark. Maybe I'll mix up some dark green. This time I added a little bit of cerulean blue to my ultramarine and yellow. Because it's, it's gonna make a darker, kind of richer green. Now I added a little bit of water because it's okay to be a little bit transparent here. Because the black is the shadow. I don't want anything to kind of show through that black. But for this color, that's okay. I can show some of that stuff that I painted underneath. Okay. Right, and this is a, a photograph because I was looking for some color changes. So I, I picked something kind of hinting at the start of fall. So there's a little bit of color here. Sometimes a photograph, if it's just all, all one thing, all one color, it loses interest. It's always better to have something kind of dynamic, meaning a lot of, a lot of little things going on at once. Now that the sky's finished, let's see, I'm going to take my brush and scrub it right over into the sky. Right. Hey, look at that. I give you permission to finger paint. That works for me. Right, I'm getting rid of some of that pink underneath. You even make it a little more shadowy, right? Bring out one of those trees. Now I'm gonna be a little bolder with my brush strokes. I'm using a little bit more paint. I'm a little bit more sure of myself. Right, and I keep changing up the greens that I'm using. It's okay, all the greens, they mix wonderful, wonderfully together and all those little details starting to come through. And I'm really just kind of scrubbing with the brush. That's my technique. Sometimes you, the paint starts to dry, so you have to add a little bit of water just to keep it wet too. If the paint feels too dry, it might, it might just be too dry. Get in that little tree there. See how I keep going back and forth? All right, I think I'm gonna get in some browns. All using one brush, just kind of cleaning in between. If a little green gets mixed in with your browns, hey, that's okay too, all right? Because this is all just mixed together. But yeah, look at that color. That's my burnt sienna with yellow. Now I went from something uh, simple right, a line on top, filled in with mostly kind of green and dark green, to something more complex, right? You know, a hundred trees, all different types, different sizes, different colors. And I'm doing it with paint, which is kind of a miracle. You know, if you can convince something, somebody that something is, is lifelike, you know, that's kind of a, an amazing feat. And that's what artists do. Right? It's gonna give you a feeling that you're in this certain space, this real place. Okay, I notice there's like little, little, little details here. There's some things kind of growing out of the water. So I have a much lighter color on the brush and I'm just kind of bringing that brush up. So notice my paintbrush direction, right? Since it's growing up, I'm kind of flicking it up, right? Flicking it up so it grows up right out of the water. Those little details, 
they can go a long way. And it makes it more interesting. Okay, there's a little bit of light here. There's something kind of on the water here, kind of like a little dock or something, or maybe it's just dirt. If you don't know what it is, paint it that way. Paint it like color. Paint it, paint the shape and color, but don't worry about detail and making up detail if you don't see any. But notice that that's going to go a long way, right? And anchoring my trees to the water here. All right, and I'm noticing my horizon line here, not exactly straight, but it's okay. You decide how tight you want your, your canvas and your painting to be. And you can see I have a loose kind of technique. Some of us are a little tighter and that works too. All right, so now that I have these kind of things that I've added, I see they're a reflection, right, in the water. So I have less, less paint and more water, and I'm even gonna mix in a little blue. So it's less intense in color, just to try to get some of that reflection in. So see that, if that were the same, it would not be that reflection, it would just kind of extend whatever this is and look like it's growing down into the water, but I want it to be a reflection. So I added a little bit of blue to that color and that goes a long way, right? Okay. This is really fun. This is the fun stuff. I'm going to go back and now get really bold and get some of my lemon yellow and white and maybe a touch of blue. So very intense, bright green, because that's what I see here. Almost yellow. Even more yellow. You don't know a color sometimes until you put it down. There we go. It might look great on your palette and then you put it down and you're like, that is not it. So what do you do? You change it. And sometimes you do all the mixing right here on the canvas, but maybe a little orange, right? I'm going for the brightest colors now, the most intense, right? It's all layers. I'm building up my layers. And we're kind of pull back a little bit, make sure that things look, look good. Cause remember you're in such a small space. It's easy to make something look good up close, but it's also another thing to make it look good far away. There's some yellow. See the bright color is tricky and yellow is actually tricky too. It's, it's uh, transparent. So you sometimes see right through it. So I'm giving this yellow the time that I think it needs, right? Some of us can get it right in one shot, one perfect brush stroke, but the rest of us kind of have to <clears throat> work at it. Okay. Get some kind of a brighter green here. It's also good to kind of see that the sun is kind of maybe coming in on this angle. Okay. Now I'm just putting all kinds of colors here, right? Now I see the rainbow. I didn't see the rainbow in the beginning, right? I just try to see the big picture, but now I'm building up to all those colors, right? Cause I'm in a, a place where I'm just adding little detail. So it might just be a one little tiny brush stroke of orange, right? Or green. And the trick is to kind of keep mixing it up. Make it dynamic, you know, make your shapes different, your colors different. Nothing's more boring in nature than if everything's the same. If everything is the same, there's, there's really no point. Unless that is your point. Okay. And this is, I should tell you, this is the spot I can just go forever. So you do have to kind of stop yourself at some point but this is the zone, right? This is where your brain is just kind of on automatic. You've done all that hard work, you've built your foundation and you do all the details. And I would be kind of foolish to do the, these things first, but this is what's calling you, right? That's what you want to paint. That's why you probably chose this photograph because of all that color. But notice it's not really 
a step that I did until the very end. Okay, and then my color here. Naturally it changed. Remember I said it's all about layers, so just like what I did here with these things kind of growing to the water, I'm gonna take some blue and mix that in with some of the green and some water and just kind of lay that on top. I still like that pink, so I'm not gonna try to get rid of that completely, but I'm just adding a little bit of green and the water helps because the water, I should say, in the, the paint itself, the water mixed in because it keeps things light and translucent, meaning I can see color underneath color. All right, maybe went a little dark, so let me add a little bit of shadow here. We're almost done. There we go, a little bit of a darker blue. So instead of seeing black in the water, I'm kind of seeing a blue black, right? There's some shadow here. Okay, and this is good. I have a smaller brush, but maybe I want the greens to kind of go into the blues, like little waves here. I'm gonna spread it out so that the the reflection is really mixing in with the water. And then I can use my fan brush here too, just to knock it down a little bit, soften things. All right, I see maybe two more things I wanna do. There's a little kind of structure here. It might be a little house or something. I kinda of wanna add that in, and then I wanna lighten it up back here. I'm gonna ignore the trees I see behind the sky for another demonstration. But I'm gonna use water. All right, so I mixed up some blue here and some of this red and then some white. What I wanna do is really warm up the sky here. The warmer you are to the horizon line, the more your sky will kind of open up and feel like there's distance. So look, I put down a color. It was too wet and too purple. It's got too much water on things, but that's okay. I'm gonna add more white and no water. So the, the water on the canvas will actually help. But look at that. If you lighten up and warm up your horizon, it will kind of open up your sky. And it makes your sky feel like a phenomenon and not a solid object. It just kind of pushes distance, right? It, it goes back into space, right? Because it might be miles and miles and miles away that you're seeing. and just lightening it up there. And I'm using that smaller brush too, that's okay. But I want a little bit more control at this point. I don't need to repaint the whole thing, just a little bit. And then maybe I just take a touch, touch of red. Let's see how red I can make it. There we go, I love that. And that just kind of opens up the sky. Maybe I'll do a little bit in the reflection. Remember, not as intense. But just a little bit there. Right, and remember I said there was more than one way to get to a color. Look at all these layers, right? I couldn't do this right off the bat. I had to build my foundation first and then work my way up. And it's usually the last strokes, right, that really make something look kind of magic and lifelike. All right, maybe I'll just add that structure. It's kind of nice to have a focal point. So I'm gonna mix or switch to a, a, a better brush. You can see it's kind of a newer brush that not so bristly compared to this one, which kind of has like kind of loose ends. It's a little bit, gonna be a little bit more rough around the edges. This is very kind of clean line. So I want for a structure to be a little bit more solid. So I'm gonna use that brush. Um, I want it to be warm too, cause the light's falling on it. So I'm gonna use some of that purple that I used in the sky instead of just pure white. White is actually a cool color. It kind of looks gray overall. Um, so I want to use something warm. So here's that structure here. It's tiny, right? It doesn't even matter, but I'm gonna put it, maybe I'll put it right here in the shadow. And it's not just a solid line, it's a, it's a bunch of little kind of shapes, little blocks. 
then that might kind of read as a house. You know, already that starts to read as architecture because the line is treated a little differently. And then it seems to be a little bit more kind of a taupe color here. And then maybe there's a little roof. Add the little roof on top. It just gives you a little focal point and it doesn't have to be perfect or exact, but it gives you kind of a, a place to look. And it's not directly center, which is nice. It's a little bit off, off center. And these are just, I'm literally just painting kind of blocks and lines, right? There's a little shadow under the roof. By far the most detailed spot. Um, and then I'll have to do a reflection, right? Because everything here that I've painted so far is being reflected in the water. So essentially, if you're painting one thing, you're painting two because you have to have the reflection. So you're kind of doubling everything. And that adds just a little bit more interest. Maybe I'll make this a little brighter. And then maybe the fan brush here on top. Okay, so before I say goodbye, I'm gonna make a little bit of a line here. This is impromptu, right? Just a little bit of a glow on top of that water. And then I'm gonna take some, some red and a very, very, very tiny brush. This is actually a watercolor brush, size zero, whatever that means and take some red. I'm gonna sign it here in the corner with this tiny zero brush. It's always good to sign your last name. I've probably painted my signature more times than paintings that I have finished because I have to keep redoing it. But my last name is Halloran, so I'm writing my last name Halloran. I used to do my initials, but then people said, can you add your last name? So you just suck it up. And there's my, my signature in red. So it's kind of a nice compliment too because that pink going underneath. And there you have it. So we went from something very complicated like this photograph and hopefully made it a bit more simple. Remember I drew that line, drew the tree line, drew the reflection line, and then I just started filling things in from dark to light. Tons of concepts mixed into. Your painting will look different from this, but that's the beauty of art. So I will see you all next time.